What's happening? Brian Tong here with everything Google we can pack inside of a show. And I'm here to tell you, despite rumors of its demise, Glass is not dead. We've talked in the past about how an updated enterprise version of Glass is being field tested, and the Glass for Work startup Augmetics has raised $17 million in funding from five leading healthcare systems to continue to deploy wearable solutions for doctors. Now, this video showcases how doctors are using Glass right now to access forms, prescriptions, medical history, and more while talking to the patients. CrowdOptic is also another Glass for Work startup that provides video streaming services for ambulance feeds for hospitals, live surgery video feeds, and they also work with sports clients like the Denver Broncos. It just reached its 10,000th video stream. Now, even if it's not for the consumer right now, you're finally seeing how Glass has settled themselves into specific use cases that are extremely helpful. We also talked about Android VR last week, and the official Google I.O. schedule has been released with a couple interesting sessions. Google's vision for VR will be hosted at their main stage, and we'll cover what they've built, learned, and where they're going. There's also a few Project Tango-related sessions with a reported Tango and Cardboard mashup potentially coming soon, but some rumor reports believe we'll see Google's Gear VR-like headset of their own at I.O. this year as well. Google continues to test its self-driving cars, and if you think about it, these cars have to basically be perfect before we even see them on the road, which is no small feat. But Chinese search engine Baidu wants a piece of the pie and announced their own self-driving car research and development center in Sunnyvale, California. That's basically Google's backyard. Now, they recently hired a Tesla autopilot software engineer, and Google better be making sure their fences are a little higher because, you know, Baidu is going to try to peek over that fence once in a while. Also, Google looks like they're finally committing to the Chrome OS with the full Android app library after a recent finding from a Reddit user found the ability to enable Android apps to run on your Chromebook in the settings. Now, users only had a handful of apps in the past, but this could mean Chrome OS is opening the floodgates, and it's likely this is something that gets more attention at I.O. And Sony has announced that the Android and developer preview is now available for the Xperia Z3 phone. It works for the D6603 and 6653 variants. Sony is the first OEM to bring the dev preview to its users. And last year, they also allowed owners to test the Marshmallow Concept software months before its release. And if you're still not seeing podcasts in the Play Music app yet, try just refreshing your account. Go into the music settings, hit refresh in the account section, and you should see the podcast options now. See? Easy peasy. And in the most important news that we weren't able to cover in last week's show, the Samsung Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge are now available in a color they call pink gold. Yeah, sure, it looks nothing like Apple's rose gold. In fact, they say it's inspired by skin tone. But if they really wanted to be ballsy, Samsung should have just called it skin. All right, that's going to do it for this week. You can email us at googleicious at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time for some more of that Googleicious. Gugalicious.